Okay, hello and welcome to Piney News for September 2016 and we're in the Pine Barrens here at uh, Deer Park again and we're going to do it from Deer Park and uh, hopefully Yellow Jacket will not chase me away from the last spot that I was in uh, because we haven't had any rain and it's been too warm and the Yellow Jackets are all over the place. So let's get started. The first story I want to talk about actually is a story that's happening uh, pretty close to here. Uh, it's called the Heartland Town Square Project. And it's on former Pilgrim uh, State. Uh, basically, this is areas that used to be part of Pilgrim uh, Pilgrim Hospital. Uh, now, Pilgrim Hospital's functions it's still around, but it functions in a much smaller role than it has before. So, basically, uh, they want to build this huge development. Uh, and I mean, they are preserving some land. I'll I'll give them that. They are preserving some land, but the problem is that there's still uh, going to be some land lost. So. Uh, basically, they're preserving about a third of, uh, of what is uh, on the property, a third of the wooded areas. So we're going to look at some of the, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the, uh, basically some of the diagrams of this project. Okay, so we're looking at a diagram of the uh, Heartland uh, Town Square uh, project. And this is what they want to build here in the... Uh, on the f former Pilgrim site. Now, you'll see here in the center of the screen that they're leaving the core part of Pilgrim okay. So they, the, the, the core part of Pilgrim will, I guess, continue to function. And I think it's important because, um, you know, not only is it important for, you know, to, you know, to have preserve some open space here, uh, but also it's important because um, New York State um, needs to keep programs for the mentally ill running. Um, so we're going to look forward here and more of the diagrams here. This, this is not to scale. Um, but it'll show you the uses, basically, that would, would occur here, all right, in this diagram. So I want to show you, basically, what it is now. So we'll show you where they plan on removing trees so let's go ahead and now look in the Google and you'll see this is the current site and where they plan on removing trees is going to be over here over here and some over here too as well I have a problem with that I don't think any Pine Barrens should be removed. Uh, while they've gone somewhat, they've tried to accommodate preservation somewhat, as you see in this plan here, that there's still way, way too many trees that are being knocked down here. And uh, I've got a huge problem with that, and I think they need to, like, scale it back a little bit so they don't knock down so many trees. And obviously, such a huge project is going to have an impact on the area. And I would much rather see a project like this in a truly blighted area than in an open space. And it seems like, like I said before, developers just seem to want to keep building an open space instead of tackling these really, truly blighted areas here. I also want to go over these comments here uh, that basically uh, talk about the uh, pitch pine, the pine barrens. Um, and I'm going to read response, comment EC3 right here. I'm going to read this to you. All right, so, and the response. So I'm going to read this right here. All right, so the DEIS indicates the loss of pitch pine oak forest community type to be the overall ecology to the overall ecology of the site would be minimal. We disagree. This loss will diminish the overall essential character of the existing Pine Barrens environment. This statement is supported in the SGPA in the section on problems and concerns, where it states that the gradual loss of remaining open spaces and the need to divide strategies and techniques for slowing or offsetting that loss is a continuing concern, especially in an area that has already suffered some impairment of water quality. The town of Huntington believes the proposal 
of incorporating native vegetation into site landscaping is insufficient mitigation. Development should be redirected away from the pitch pine forest habitat to preserve this special ecology from individual and cumulative adverse effects. And then in response, they say, with respect to the pitch pine oak forest, it is noteworthy that the Long Island Pine Barrens Protection Act, which covers 100,000 acres of property within the central pine barrens, was designated to protect pine barrens resources, including the pitch pine oak forest habitat. Subject property is not within the designated pine barrens area. Of course, that's the excuse they use, and that's the problem. Okay, this is one more comment I wanted to go over that I actually had to save because the document is so long. Um, it says here, in response, as detailed in Section 4.4 of the DGEIS, 48.57 acres of existing 160.18 acres of pitch pine oak forest would be preserved under the proposed development plan. It is important to note that much of this acreage has direct directly contiguous off-site counterparts of the same community type, including the protected 800-acre Edgewood Preserve, which would continue to protect groundwater supplies and to which wildlife would be expected to emigrate. And they say that they have support from the Friends of the Edgewood Oak Brush Plains Preserve. I don't think that, you know what I mean, they're preserving a third, but I mean, they should be preserving all 160 acres. They keep, this is the excuse, oh, there's pine barrens elsewhere. But the loss of pine barrens is detrimental to, we, this is a, 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 a diminishing ecosystem here on Long Island, and we shouldn't be destroying any of it. Any of it. It should all be preserved. And this is the problem with these developers. They think because they preserve some of it, they're doing us a favor. Well, they're not. If you really want to do us a favor, you preserve all of the woods, all right? That means not one pitch pine tree should be left, all the pitch pines should be left alone. Not one should be touched. So, as you can see, it's a huge project. And uh, I, I have concerns about it, I really do. Uh, uh, I understand that smart growth project is kind of important, but why here? Why here? Why don't they redevelop places like Newcastle and all the other areas of, of Long Island? Why don't they just knock down all the shanty houses and, 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 and flop houses and, and decaying buildings in places like Newcastle and, and, and put the development there? And there's a train line that goes right through there. No, we've got to build it in the middle of the woods. Of course, we have to build it in the middle of the woods. That seems to be the consensus among developments, developers, unfortunately. Um, the next story that I have for you is Southampton... Hills Project. Remember I told you that the Southampton town made an offer to the developer to purchase that land for preservation? Well, I'm not surprised, but the developer rejected it, of course. Uh, uh, Discovery Land Trust rejected that. Uh, they're not going to go quietly, uh, and I really do think now it's time to use eminent domain to get that property uh, because it is in the public's best interest. And whenever you have something that's in the public's best interest, whether it be for infrastructure or, uh, I mean, technically water is infrastructure. So uh, I really think Southampton needs to move to now seize this land via eminent domain uh, in Quag, the Sand Hills, which is very much an environment like this. Uh, they need to move ahead and seize that land uh, for preservation. All right, I want to go over briefly, this is uh, some more breaking news, I guess you could call it, uh, that we had to add into the Piney News. Uh, there is a development now proposed for the abandoned Kmart site in Middle Island and they want to turn part of it into a park. This is not the actual part of the, the Kmart building. This is the old Kmart building, which has been demolished. Uh, this is actually not going to get redeveloped. It's this area that's next to it. Here's where the problem is. Take a look at where they want to build parking, a playground. They say they want to create a park here. Here's the problem. They're creating a park, but they're knocking down trees to create a park. Tell me how the hell do you create a park while knocking down trees? Uh, so they're going to be knocking down. There's some piney woods over here. Uh, more pitch pines being knocked down. This is ridiculous, man. This shit has got to stop. Why don't they build this over here where the abandoned Kmart is? No, it's because the, real, the, the, the Breslin who owns the abandoned Kmart wants to hold on to that property. This is not a good deal for people, and they're trying to pass this through the Suffolk County 
legislature uh, at its September 7th meeting. So uh, I'm going to let the Suffolk County Legislature know what I think of this plan. It is wrong because they are knocking down trees to build it, and you can't call it a park if you're knocking down trees and putting in ball field. Field of dreams, my ass. It should be a field of pines. The next thing that I want to talk about is this whole thing with the heat. Now, July was the hottest month ever recorded since 1880, and August is right in line to be the same way. Uh, you know, this is what I mean about climate change. It's happening, it's with us, and uh, people will deny it, both on the left and the right. People will deny it, and the fact is we're not doing the right things to combat climate change right now. Um, obviously, we've got to curb our fossil fuel emissions. I've gone over how we can uh, reduce the climate change, and I'll talk about it briefly once again, is that obviously we need to drive more fuel-efficient vehicles uh, and eventually move away from uh, gasoline and oil and move toward uh, electric cars and other forms of energy. Uh, and that electric could be generated from the sun, put solar panels in a lot of buildings. We could also use nuclear. Uh, and as far as a fuel that we can burn, uh, because of global warming, there is an escape of methane, methane, uh, methane hydrates and methanes from the Arctic. Uh, and if this methane escapes into the atmosphere, it's a way more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So I personally think we should actually harvest that methane and use it for energy. Uh, it's better to burn it and use it for energy than it is to let it escape in the atmosphere. So that's something to think about as well. Uh, and of course, we need to find out ways to actively cool the planet because uh, we're going now too far here. We're going too far. I think we've reached the tipping point. Um, let's get back to some more local news. I don't want to be like News 12, right? <laughs> when it comes to the lack of local news. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is there is $500,000, 500 grand, going to fight the Southern Pine Beetle. Finally, it's coming from New York State to fight the Southern Pine Beetle here on Long Island so we can stop these Southern Pine Beetles from destroying our Pine Barrens. So I think that's good. We're starting to see some more, some more action from the state on that. And I think that's great. Um, the other thing that we have to talk about is all these fish kills. And that relates to the climate change. Uh, there have been a lot of fish kills in St. Deport. Uh, yeah, huge, just disgusting areas of fish. There's been a lot of pollution. And it's all because of the heat, basically. The heat, uh, the, the, it's, it's actually not so much, it's partially pollution, but it's also partially the heat. The water is too warm, and the ponds at freshwater lakes and also our bays. And it leads to these fish die-offs, and that's happening. In Senate Port, it also happened in New Jersey, I believe in Monmouth County. Um, that's that's occurring more and more now, uh, and that's a real important that's a real important issue that's related to climate change. Uh, in the town of Brookhaven, Stony Brook is repaving a road, and they want to remove trees to repave the road. This makes no sense at all. You checked out to read the article. Uh, this is another example of just cutting down trees for no freaking reason. They did this along South Oyster Bay Road. And it's terrible. I mean, and now they want to do it in Stony Brook. I mean, why? we know trees are important. We know trees absorb carbon dioxide, and give oxygen, and provide us shade. Why are we cutting them down? I don't understand why Long Island, these people on Long Island, these politicians think that it's okay to just cut trees down. And nobody stops them. The next thing that I want to talk about is Asian longhorn beetle. Now, in these cases, just like with pine beetles, Asian longhorn beetle infects deciduous trees. So it doesn't really go after pine trees, it goes, it goes after deciduous trees. And the thing is that Asian longhorn beetles, uh, in order to stop them, you have to cut down the tree. In that case, yeah, you have to cut down the tree. They've been found basically in West Babylon. It's a shame that these beetles are back. I think that it's all related to climate change. I really do. This is affecting all these things. Eventually, we're going to see killer bees here. We're going to see... Uh, killer bees are like Africanized bees, but they're moving northward because the climate's changing. And we're going to see that as well. Um, and the next thing, just to briefly I want to go over, we've made some progress on creating a new bike trail. Uh, basically, it's going to run from Port Jefferson down to Wading River on the old, uh, there used to be the Port Jefferson branch, it used to go all the way to Wading River where they're going to extend. A trail basically people walk it anyway it's like a dirt path it's along power lines well now it's going to be a nice bike path for people to use 
and I think that's good. So you know, it's a nice little scenic way to go, and uh, the way people so they don't have to walk along the road or bike along the road. I think that's good. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, and this this really pisses me off, uh, Robert Clemente Park in Brentwood. Uh, three years ago, there was a dumping scandal where they were dumping hazardous waste in this park. Three years ago. And from what I've, been, I've heard on the news, there hasn't really been much done so far to clean it up. Uh, everybody's pointing fingers. There's been, you know, some people arrested and charged. But the thing is that this park is still closed. And you know what gets me is that this wouldn't happen if this was in Sayville. This wouldn't happen if it was in some lily white area. But because it's Brentwood, and the poor folks in Brentwood, they are inundated with illegals, gangs, crime, and now they have their park closed. It's obvious that there is a systematic racism here on Long Island, and it's 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 in all it's in housing, it's in it's in uh, it's in, in in our parks, it's it's ingrained in the way the government works around here, and I think it's it's disgusting. I really do, and this relates to all the other stuff that I've talked about when it comes to the divided Long Island we live in, and the politicians that want to force the poor citizens and uh, you know the minorities out. So they could just have these rich people snatching up all the good areas, of course, talked about before, like you saw a little video on Mass Equal Park. Oh, there's a yellow jacket right by the camera. All right, he went away. Uh, hopefully he doesn't bother me. Uh, Uh-oh, yeah, he's bothering me. All right, well, I'm going to stand here and read it anyway. All right, whatever. These yellow jackets are all over the place in here. And hopefully I don't get stung, because I've never been stung before by one. But all right, i got to complete this piney news. Um, so basically... There is a systematic problem with discrimination against the poor, against minorities, and against people with disabilities. And they are denied the access. It's not fair that people in Brentwood have to deal with all these problems and then have to deal with having no park for three freaking years. That should have been cleaned up after a year. You know if that happened in Sayville or Blue Point or some other wealthier area, it would have been cleaned up. But no, not in Brentwood. No. So that, that's an outrage. I think there's a yellow jacket on my head. Or a pine fly. I don't know. This is what happens when you do the pine news outside. That's why I like doing it indoors so I have a little more control over things. But I figure we'll do it a little more different this time. Uh, so that's disgusting. We've got yellow jacket again. They're all over the place. I don't know what's going on, why there's so many here. Usually yellow jackets on to the Pine Barrens. I don't understand it at all one bit. But uh, anyway, uh, so we're going to go now head to uh, this other story basically with Andrew Cuomo. He caught a thresher shark, our governor. Uh, if you think our governor cares about the environment, well, thresher sharks are kind of, I wouldn't say endangered, but they are definitely you know, a species of special concern. And while catching them is not illegal, I don't think it's a good example that our governor set, uh, and I really do think that uh, it really sends a bad message. It really does. Uh, I, I care a lot about sharks. I don't think we should be catching sharks and, and hunting them personally. Uh, I mean, it's something we catch a fish, but sharks, sharks are like whales. They're apex predators. We can't be taking predators out of the environment because when we do that, we throw off the balance of uh, the e ecology. You know what I'm saying? Just like here on Long Island, we have deer. Way too many deer on Long Island because we killed all their predators, like the wolves and everything like that. So now we have too many deer. So that is a serious problem uh, that, our, uh, that, that our governor does not, not send a good message. But I'm not surprised because he is a pompous jerk, just like Ed Mangano. And that takes us to our next story with Nice Bus. He uh, is giving me permission to use it. Uh, this is basically an example of the crap that goes on here at Nice Bus. Uh, there have been a lot of breakdowns lately. And and that bus you're looking at, bus 1733, basically stalled out. Uh, he'll put it in the video. Basically what happened was it stalled out uh, when the driver put the air conditioner on. And uh, therefore, uh, it, and then it wouldn't restart again. So there's a severe lack of maintenance at NICE. It's only getting worse. And it's reaching the point where the New York, the New York State Department of Transportation isn't doing anything about this. It's obvious they're under orders by Governor Cuomo to keep this crap running. And so he's showing the bottom, and it looks like maybe the radiator blew or something like that. Um, and uh, this is just one of the breakdowns. Yeah, he basically said he 
put the AC on and it stalled out. That's basically what happened with that bus. Uh, this is when no maintenance gets you, uh, and I'm just going to forward it over a little bit. Uh, there it is stuck over there, and uh, there is the stupid van that they have. Uh, their little van that they have. Nice has a little van, basically, that will move it over a little more. And you see that there's a van that they have. MTA had trucks, uh, like full-service trucks and everything to fix the buses. But Nice uses these stupid little vans that hardly have anything in them. They're bare bones, and uh, they, they don't really, uh, they can't really fix the buses properly with them. MTA has a full maintenance truck that can uh, recharge the battery, that can fix the oil. They, can, they have all kinds of stuff on that to fix the bus. Uh, that van um, couldn't fix the bus, basically. Uh, the guy in that van, he moves over and he shows, he walks over to the bus, and you can see the uh, inside of the van here. Oh, look at that. Look at the inside of this. Look at this shit, will you? That is ridiculous. That is what I mean. You get what you pay for when you don't want to pay for the MTA. This is what you get. This is the quality you get here. Um, you can see lifting up the engine cover. And uh, basically, uh, look at that. I mean, it was on the N22A that the bus broke down on. Uh, there's no maintenance. There's no maintenance. And they, didn't, they weren't able to get it started. And... Uh, a, the driver had to wait for a tow truck, probably, and wait hours and hours and hours for a tow truck. And this is just several breakdowns. And then he shows this one here. And look at the radiator on that bus. Just let me pause that for a minute. Look at the radiator on that bus. It's dirty. They don't clean the radiators. They don't maintain this shit. It, it, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. This shit continues to operate. Uh, you know, uh, the, these buses would never pass inspection. Never pass inspection. And this bus here has no headlights. Uh, the headlights are malfunctioning. Tell me how this would pass inspection. The New York State Department of Transportation obviously is being paid off by Cuomo, or influenced by Cuomo to keep these buses on the road. Another example of great, nice maintenance. Uh, we're having headlight problems. That headlight is out. And if both headlights go on, then the rear lights go out. You know, I mean, there's been a lot of stuff going on with NICE. I mean, there have been a lot of breakdowns. It's, the maintenance continues to be bad. It's only going to get worse. God, this bus is so slow. Yeah, this bus on the 45 could barely make it up hills. And there was a breakdown on the 45 on Monday, a breakdown on the 35 on Monday, and another breakdown on the 35 on Tuesday. Unbelievable. And, and now I want to take you to Roosevelt Field. Uh, it looked like they were working on it later in the day, but this, this whole shelter was just smashed. And those potholes are still there, so check this out. Welcome to the ghetto. I wonder how that got broken and how long it's going to be broken for. Take a look what's also still here. This pothole. Considering this is a, one of the most upscale malls on Long Island, this may as well be the ghetto. Yeah, so you see all the potholes still there and, the sh and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and that huge hole in the shelter basically Obviously, it shows that there's no security over here. Again, bus riders are treated like shit. They don't even, the mall should provide some security. There should be something, this is what I talked about before, the, the quality of the ridership, on, it's not just the quality of the service, it's the quality of the ridership, the kind of passengers you're getting. It's getting more and more ghetto because when you have a service that's very poor to begin with, that's, that's, that's declining in the quality, you're going to get people that, that, that have, have le, le, low standards too. And that's what's exactly happening here. And it's not right. It's not right at all, um, you know. But again, it does not seem like anyone is willing to fight for us. I've reached out to so many people. It's like literally banging your head against the wall. You're just getting nowhere about it. You're getting nowhere uh, because the the po it's ingrained in the politicians, like I said before, with other stuff, but also with nice bus. Cuomo, Mangano, they've gotten close. The feds have gotten close to D'Amato. So the only way this is going to be undone. I believe is through the federal government. And the federal government, Preet Bharara, 
starts arresting Aldamato and it's going to come out with this whole thing with nice bus that Aldamato's law firm represented the the, the Veolia when they when they when they got nice bus that is going to change a lot of things and I, I do think that the feds will eventually get to it I hope they will it just takes a long long time and I really want to see all the people responsible the three people Aldamato Ed Mangano and Andrew Cuomo these are the three people that are responsible for this mess they need to be indicted charged and locked up all right for what they've done all right it, nobody wanted this this was done purely out of politics and corruption this was a bad thing for all of us bad for the drivers bad for the riders bad for long island's economy and also bad for the whole operational standpoint of public transportation on long island because the long island railroad for instance now has trouble getting buses and the buses they bring like you saw in the other video, the drivers from the state, they're not familiar with it. It worked right when Long Island busted it. Rarely had that many problems with it. Now it's a disaster. So uh, that is basically what's going on with Nice Bus. And the last thing, well, actually it won't be the last thing, but Suffolk County Transit uh, the cuts. They're having the hearings next week. I hope to attend at least one or both of them. So uh, I'm going to express at the, at the, at the hearing, basically, uh, my, my plan. You uh, saw my other video, Suffolk County Transit changes. Um, Personally, I think there are routes, like I said before, that they should have included. Some of the routes, like I said, that they're eliminating have no alternatives. All right, there are other routes they could have eliminated that had alternatives. The S90, for instance, once that's cut, that's gonna that's like the worst one because that leaves West Hampton Beach without anything. Well, anything. There's not nothing even close to West Hampton Beach or Quag. That whole area is gonna be left without bus service. What do they expect people to do? Take the train and then take the S92. The S92 is jammed already. It's overcrowded. This this cut is only going to make it worse, which is why I suggested to have the S90, the route changed, uh, as you see my Suffolk County Transit plans. So I'd have it extended to serve Hampton Bays. I'd actually take a little pressure off the S92 and increase ridership so more people take the bus. So uh, that route doesn't become such a losing route. But will the county listen? Will Suffolk be a little more receptive to us than Nassau. I, one can only hope. Um, last thing I want to talk about, of course, is the election. We all know the media is stacked against Donald Trump. And uh, I really think that the media has been absolutely despicable in their slant against Donald Trump. It's been so obvious time and time again for this whole thing, this latest thing with immigration. They're saying, oh, he's, he's changing his, uh, his tune on immigration. He's never changed. He wants the illegals out. But it's obvious that you can't just have it, 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 it deportation force to deport all of them at once. It's much easier to just enforce the existing laws, and this is the stuff I've talked about. If you're hiring them, you're housing them, you go to jail. You broke a federal law. And once they know they can't get work anymore, they can't get benefits, they can't suck us like a tick, they're going to go back. A lot of them are going to go back on their own. All right? And the ones that don't, we'll deal with. Those will be deported. And they'll have to, if they want to come here, they have to come here. They have to go back and then come the right way. So Trump hasn't changed his opinion one bit on this. All right? What Trump is doing is trying to reach out to minorities more. And I think that's good because the, the illegal immigration, that impacts legal United States minorities more than anyone. It, it, it impacts legal immigrants. It impacts minorities, especially blacks. They've had to deal with these illegal immigrants dumped in their community. That's so true here on Long Island, too. Uh, they've got to deal with these illegals dumped in their communities while the white people, the rich white people, especially the Wall Street people, in places like Massapequa Park, and you know the whole deal, they, they don't have to deal with them one bit. They only get to live with their own climate. The rest of us have to deal with these problems. And Hillary represents that. Hillary is with Wall Street. Uh, you know, I don't care what Hillary comes out of Hillary's mouth. She lies. She's a pathological liar. And she she wants to do what's right, right for Wall Street. Wall Street wants to keep this rigged system in place right now. They want to keep the illegals here. And they want to keep keep us down. But I th really honestly think Trump is going to... Trump is our only hope at this point. And I really think people need to disregard what you're hearing on TV. Disregard the polls. Uh, because... Trump is the only one who has a chance of fixing this country and fixing Long Island. All right? Hillary, forget. Hillary gets in. We're, we're continuing down the same road. All right? She's, she's with Wall Street. She doesn't care about the poor. She tries to act like she cares. Oh, I care about the poor or the black people or whatnot. She, she cares about the rich, white, Wall Street elites. 
Those are her best friends. An example of how corrupt and how influenced Hillary is, is she has re re relations to this company that's raised the price of EpiPens. Now, if you have allergies, you have an allergic reaction to things like a wasp or a bee, you have to take an EpiPen, otherwise you could die. All right, but the company that makes these EpiPens keeps raising the prices because Wall Street wants to increase profits. And guess who is related to that company? Hillary Clinton. All right, so Hillary Clinton, Kane, they're all with Wall Street, man. They're all with Wall Street. These look like just the kind of people you see on the Babylon train. All right, they're not, they're not for us, man. They're not for us. Uh, they're very arrogant, and you know, I. Some people say, oh, you don't like rich people. I, I, first of all, I never said I don't like rich people. Rich people who work hard, get where they are, great. But I don't like when people make money, and Wall Street makes money, off suffering of other people. That I don't like. All right? That I don't like. Um, I also don't like, like I said before, just because you have money, just because you come and moved into Massapequa or Belmore or whatever town you moved into, uh, you know, it doesn't give you the right to now say, well, I don't want people who don't have money in my town. That's the way these people are, though. They don't want people like me in there. Um, I want to touch just a little bit on um, disabilities, just a little bit, because um, there's widespread discrimination against housing for people with disabilities. And I've talked about before how I live in Westbury and how on Fort, uh, now Westbury has some issues going on. Uh, you know, we, we're trying. Westbury's really trying to turn itself around, but it's tough because of the rig system that we have in place. All right, but it's not fair that people with mental illness and other disabilities are not allowed in the more nicer towns on Long Island. They're always housing. I've been told this time and time again, the housing is always somebody said, oh, well, we, we, there's, there's plenty of housing in Freeport, Baldwin, Glen Cove. Yeah, those were all bad areas, actually worse than Westbury. Uh, you know, what, what if I want to move to, uh, Farmingdale, or I want to move to Massapequa Park. Sorry, you're not allowed to live there because we don't want to rent to people like you. That's what's going on. It's illegal, it's widespread, but it goes on. Uh, it's a widespread problem on Long Island. Uh, it, 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 it really affects the client choice. And one of the issues that I may be starting to get involved in is rights for the mentally ill. Because uh, right now, the rights for the mentally ill, especially here on Long Island, we don't feel like we have many rights, and uh, a lot of people don't understand us. And I, I, I mean, it's kind of a personal issue, but at the same time, I don't think what's going on is very fair. And uh, it's it's just another issue that I have to talk about. Hey, you know, they're trying to get rid of us, but I lived on Long Island 40 years, born in Brookhaven Hospital in the Pine Barrens. I am not going anywhere, you rich people. I am staying here. This is my home. I was here before you were here. All right, and I don't intend on going anywhere. I'm going to fight for these Pine Barrens. I'm going to fight for what's right because this is Long Island. This is my home. I love this place. All right? And I know some of my commenters uh, said, oh, Long Island's are all horrible, whatever. Well, Long Island's my home. It has its flaws. I love the place. I, I really don't want to live anywhere else. So I want to thank you for watching. Take it easy. And uh, hopefully it cools off. Oh, and one last thing. We have to watch the tropics. Obviously, we have a couple of things. So if there's any threat to our area, I'll keep you posted. Anyway, take it easy. All right, I do want to bring you some late breaking weather news that I have to, you know, break in here for because uh, it has uh, recently come to my attention that once again, stall front syndrome has decided to ruin our weekend. Now, I want you to take a look first of all at the current satellite, and you'll see that the current cold front is over here, moving very slowly, and you'll be able to see what is now tropical storm Hermine, which will probably become a hurricane. Uh, before it impacts the Gulf Coast of Florida, and then offshore we we, we have a we have a very weak tropical depression that's moving offshore, and then we have a wave that's non-tropical, an extra tropical wave over here. Um, and basically, it was supposed to be a nice weekend, but now what's going on? Uh, well, first show you the text models here for our for some of our some stations. We'll take a look at Belmar and. Belmar and Farmingdale. Belmar and Farmingdale. There's Belmar, Farmingdale, and Monmouth County up here, and then uh, our Farmingdale Airport here on Long Island here. And you'll see that the front kind of gets hung up, and uh, we don't really, we may clear out a little bit on Friday, but then it clouds right back up again on Saturday, and the long range kind of shows that the weekend now, which was supposed to be nice and clear, is now 
going to have a lot of clouds and possibly rain from whatever's left of her mane. Um, this front was supposed to move through, but once again, stall front syndrome has decided it has decided that uh, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to look at the GFS right now. Uh, this is for Friday morning. This is the forecast. It's a Friday morning. And I want to show you the problem. We have this beautiful air mass here that's trying to come in from Canada, but this fucking ridge, let's, I have to use that language because this freaking offshore ridge here is causing the front to slow down, and it's causing this Hermine here to miss the trough. And so what's going to happen is instead of getting kicked out like it was supposed to and like what should normally happen, this is what's supposed to happen in the atmosphere. Instead of that happening, it's going to track up the coast. And you see right here, it's tracking up the coast. And uh, I'm just showing you the GFS because the GFS has been pretty, so far, pretty accurate as far as the position of this thing. Now, this is not going to be a strong tropical storm. Uh, I don't, it's mainly going to bring a lot of rain, but you can see that the ridge has blocked it from, this is a similar setup that happened with Sandy, however, this storm is not going to be anywhere near as strong as Sandy, it shouldn't be, alright, and basically it just kind of slowly lingers over here because it's blocked by offshore ridging once again, and the offshore ridging is a constant issue due to global warming and climate change. And so we finally clear out by maybe Tuesday and the Wednesday, but then it gets hot again. Uh, we were supposed to get into this nice, cool air. We can't get into it. If you want this air, head to Montana or something, because uh, this, this stupid ridge offshore just won't die.